Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna be going through the Fortinet Zero Trust Network Access. In this uh, lab uh, scenario, if you'd like to learn about the uh, HTTPS access proxy with ZTNA tags, this is the right place for you. We'll be uh, going through a lab that demonstrate how remote user would access HTTP, HTTPS uh, internal resources using the FortiGate ZTNA. Let's get started. So this is the topology we're gonna go through in this lab. We have the uh, Ford client EMS, Windows Server, and uh, Web Server on the 20.0 network, internal user on 10.0 network, FortiGate that is connected to the uh, internet home network, and a remote user trying to access into the web uh, server. Uh, I have in the descriptions timestamps, so feel free to jump into different section of this uh, video that you'd want. So we'll get started with this lab. So next one we're gonna do, we're gonna configure 40 client EMS. The integration between 40 client EMS and the 40 gate has already been configured. Uh, if you'd like to know how is that set, you could refer to um, the video on my YouTube channel. I show how to do security fabric integration. Now we'll access the 40 client EMS uh, Windows machine and and there we're accessing the EMS software using the browser on IP 20.10. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to configure the integration between the um, 40 client EMS and the LDAP or uh, Windows AD. So the 40 client EMS would be able to pull Windows uh, the Active Directory uh, user information. The Windows Server is 20.100. I'm going to configure the username and password. It's recommended to have LDAP as connection, but in our scenario, we're not going to use that. So I'll do test, it says success. I'm going to go ahead and do save. After that, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll have to add the domain and select the user uh, group or the uh, OU that I want to pull from the AD. So for me, it's going to be the users. Go ahead, click save. Now the syncing is happening between the 40 client EMS and the AD server. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to configure the endpoint profiles and after that the policy. To configure the endpoint profiles, I'll go to endpoint profiles. I'll specifically configure uh, system settings and uh, malware protection. Um, let me delete this in here. I'll add a new one. I'll call it remote users profile or system profile. And specifically on the profile, I'll make sure so show zero trust tag on 40 client GUI is enabled and what that does is it will allow the tags to show up on the uh, 40 client software and we'll see that uh, in this uh, video later go ahead and click save uh, the malware protection i'm gonna delete this existing one i'm gonna create one remote users um, AV protection. I'll enable antivirus. All right, so we configured the endpoint profiles that we are going to use. And in order to apply that um, into the pro into the specific users with 40 clients, we'll have to create a policy. And that, that policy is configured in here. Now, we want to apply these profile that we created earlier, endpoint profile, to a users who are off fabric to the 40 client EMS. Now, how are we going to identify that these users are off fabric? Uh, so first, let's create own fabric detection rule. So the 40 client knows that these users are on fabric. And if they don't belong in this network address, they will be considered as off fabric. So this is called on fabric user and the IP 192.168.10.0. Okay. 
plus 24. So this rule is going to say any local subnet that belong to this uh, sub address uh, would be considered as on fabric users. So I'll go back and create the policy. This policy is going to be called off fabric or remote users. And it's going to match the LDAP or the domain that we uh, integrated earlier. I'm going to enable off fabric. So this profile is applied when the endpoint is off fabric. So we see that a new tabs have been added on the right. The one on the left is for on fabric users, which belong to this on fabric detection rule. The one on the right would be for off fabric users. And we're going to have remote users AV protection and we're going to have this remote users system profile. There's another video where I have the um, Fortinet ZTNA uh, applied for on fabric uh, users. Check out this video on my uh, channel. And um, this case in here, we're going to be applying it for remote users that are accessing internal resources using the uh, ZTNA access proxy, 40 key ZTNA access proxy with ZTNA tags. So we've done uh, the policy configuration. Now go ahead and click save. Now, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to configure the ZTNA tags that I'm going to use in this lab. So the first ZTNA tags I'm going to call it Remote Users Group, and this Remote User Group I'm going to call it Admins, and the tag name is going to be Admin, and that rule has specifically to match users admins in the active directory any user that is part of this admin group in the active uh, directory would receive this ztna tag all right so this first tag is created the second tag we're going to create is malware uh, or uh, av protection now this tag I'm going to specify the rule that says uh, we have to have the AV software installed and running. Now, since I have the profile created earlier, uh, malware protection, and this profile is applied to the policy, which is going to uh, push these profiles to off fabric or remote users as we specified in here, uh, these users will have the AV protection enabled. So they're gonna receive the ZTNA tag that I created, which is the AV protection, all right? Now, the next step for us is gonna be configuring the uh, 40 gate ZTNA rule and ZTNA uh, server to allow remote user to do ZTNA access proxy using HTTPS. All right, so let's get started with that. So we'll check out the FortiGate in our environment and um, delete these extra links. So uh, this is the FortiGate. First, we want to verify that the ZTNA tags created, which are remote, uh, sorry, admins and AV protection are synced. So we could see AV protections and admin are uh, showing up in here. Uh, what we're going to do now, we'll have to configure the ZTNA policy or the ZTNA uh, access proxy or ZTNA server. And now the name is going to be um, web server access. So the web server is 192.168.20.20. Uh, it's going to come through the one link of the 40 gate uh, and external IP is going to be 192.168.1.60. Uh, we're going to have to use a port number that is not being used. So 
let's do 9443 default certificate is for an FSSL I'm just going to use the self-signed certificate now this is the section where we configure the server mapping uh, in our scenario or our case we're going to do HTTPS uh, HTTP is available also TCP forwarding is used to uh, allow any traffic that is uh, any um, TCP traffic through the forty gate that is not HTTP and HTTPS. We'll go through this scenario in another video, but for now we will configure HTTPS. Now the server that is internal is going to be one seven one nine two one six eight twenty dot twenty. Port is going to be four four three. Go ahead and click OK. And I'll do OK. Now the ZTNA access proxy is configured. What we need to do now is apply it to ZTNA policy. So we'll have to create a ZTNA policy. We'll call it web server access. Incoming interface is going to be the WAN interface. Source all ZTNA server is the one we configured earlier and ZTNA tag uh, I want both tags to be uh, enforced in the policy the admins and AV protection so if the 40 client has admin tags also has the AV protection tags the traffic would be allowed through the policy and one thing to mention by default the logic behind uh, this uh, ZTNA tags is using OR but what we're going to do we're going to change it to AND okay, so I'll edit this with CLI um, I need to remember what is the command I think set ZTNA match logic is AND alright so I want both to be matching in order for the traffic to be allowed all right, so next what we're going to do, we're going to verify that the client has uh, received these ZTNA tags and then we're going to test the uh, 40 client connection to the internal web server through the 40 gate HTTP and HTTPS. Now we'll check out the uh, remote users or remote users. So this is the remote user we accessed. Uh, the user is called John and John is part of the so the user John is part of the domain uh, www and he is part of the sales uh, oh, sorry the admin groups all right so first we'll have to connect the 40 client EMS for that remote user to the sorry uh, we have to connect the 40 client endpoint of the remote user to the 40 client EMS so the traffic is going to have to go through the 40 gate which is facing the internet and uh, this is the 40 gate and in order to do that we get we I already created a um, VIP rule that would allow EMS inbound traffic on point on port 8013 uh, this port is used for the uh, telecommunication between the 40 client and the 40 client EMS. We can see one to DC network. DC network is where the 40 client EMS belong. And there is a VIP rule applied. We can edit it. Uh, this rule saying any traffic coming on that external IP address, which is the 40 gate one, will go to the 40 client EMS specifically listen for external port A013 and send it to port A013 so what we're going to do now we're going to connect that 40 client to the 40 to the 40 client EMS through the 40 gate and then after that let's check it here we go it's connected now and we're going to check John tags so remember we enabled using the system profile show ZTNA tags on the 40 client GUI so here we see the tags that we created uh, admins because John belong 
to the admin group and AV protection because AV is uh, enabled in here and it's being pushed by the 40 command DMS profile that we configured uh, earlier. And now this user is off fabric. Why? Because this user does not belong to the network 192.168.10.0. So again, we can demonstrate in here the policy saying you are on fabric if you belong to 10.0, you are off fabric if you don't belong to that network. All right. So uh, next what we're going to do, we're going to test the uh, web server access. So we're going to try to access the internal resource. Uh, we will browse to the IP 192.168.1.60. Uh, HTTPS and the port is 9443 we see that we're getting um, the certificate presented to that client for ZTNA verification I'm gonna click OK now um, it's expected to see this um, 504 gateway time because um, I don't have the HTTPS or the web server set up on the environment just for testing the ZTNA purpose but um, this is it for the uh, Fortinet ZTNA uh, configuration for uh, remote user accessing HTTP, HTTPS internal resources if you like this video please make sure to like and subscribe and say stay tuned for future content see you later